Good evening and welcome to Position Sizing, my take on the markets. It's October 3rd, 2010 and before we begin I caution you again to invest at your own risk. I don't share in your profits and so I don't share in your losses. In this video I want to share with you how I draw time cycles using my homemade advanced decline momentum oscillator. For more information on the oscillator, see the other video I did earlier today. Let me preface my remarks with a couple of comments. First, Terry Laundry at T-Theory Observations introduced me to time symmetries and taught me most of what I know about cycles. Check out his free website for a wealth of information on cycles and other fascinating investment topics. Second, we will be discussing short range cycles using a top and a bottom to forecast the next top or a bottom and a top to forecast the next bottom. This methodology works fine in a trading range but not so well in a strongly trending market. There are better techniques to use in trending markets. Now let's look at this chart. We have the S&P up here on top and then my advanced decline momentum oscillator below. Most people when they first look at time symmetries want to draw from extreme price points. So for example the bottom here to the top in late April. If we do that here you'll see that the next projected bottom is very late. The first rule in drawing cycles is that you never want to be significantly late. You would have given back 50 points on the S&P if you had waited until this cycle was complete. My research has shown that drawing cycles based purely on price is doomed to failure. Another way to draw cycles is to use oscillator extremes. If we do that here from the extreme in late January to the extreme in mid-April, you can see that we the next projected bottom was about 50 points early. The second rule in drawing cycles is that you don't want to be significantly early either. The problem with drawing cycles based on oscillator extremes is that what you're really forecasting is the next oscillator extreme. Unfortunately, oscillator extremes often don't match price extremes. That point is illustrated in the divergence that I've drawn in red on the chart. The oscillator made a, late, uh, made a low in late January but price did not make a low until six trading days later. In April, the oscillator peaked uh, about a week and a half before the price did. So here are the rules that I use to draw cycles during range-bound markets. It, number one, if there is a divergence between the oscillator and price, split the divergence between the oscillator extremes. Let me illustrate that for you here. Had we split the uh, two oscillator extremes in uh, late January, early February to start our cycle, and then we had split the oscillator extremes in April, we would have come out with a projection for the next bottom in early July. The second rule that I use is if there is no divergence between oscillator and price, but instead they agree, then you simply use the common extreme. Let me comment on what we're doing here when we draw cycles based on split divergence. What you're really forecasting is the middle of the next divergence. Now you not often you don't always get a divergence. For example, here in late and sorry, in early July, we did not have a divergence pattern. But when you split the di divergence, uh, what you're really forecasting is the middle of the next divergence and so what happens is you'll either hit the price target right on or you'll be a wee bit early both of which are perfectly fine for use in trading. Very quickly here's a second example where we uh, use the single bottom and then for the center post we split the divergence um, and then we get a forecast of August 30th which in fact uh, turned out to be an accurate forecast. Thanks for your uh, uh, for joining me today. That's it. Until next time, happy trading.